Welcome to Seven Rivers Sports. I'm your host, Terry Erickson. And as you know, each week, an inside look into sports, wellness, and fitness. Well, this is a special week because the first time on the show, we ha have the privilege of interviewing Matt Schneider, the activities director at Aquinas High School and middle school, by the way. Welcome to the show, Matt. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Well, I've known you since you were uh, a Luther athlete, and even prior to that, know your family. Uh, been very involved in the athletic uh, community here, but I got to know you uh, through other friends of mine when you were at Luther, so that's where you began yeah. your athletic career. Mm -hmm. Yep, Luther was a good good school, had a, had a good time, and um, enjoyed playing sports, enjoyed being active there, and I think, is it the Kishes that I got to know you through? Sure there? is. Yep. The yep. Kish family, very yep. close. Uh, and of course, I see your dad still at the games, and uh, and, uh, and and there's a good relationship there. Yeah. We've, we've had, by the way, years ago, Scott Kish, who was coaching then, I think, at Mount Calvary. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, yeah, all the way back to Mount Cal. Yeah. We were talking about yeah. like, the life of a volunteer coach because he coached his son, Alex. Alex, yep. And, uh, Probably his daughters, too. And his daughters. Yeah. And so uh, we're, we're still maintain close relationship with the mm -hmm. Kish family. Mm -hmm. So you began uh, at Luther, and yeah. then from there you graduated and uh, off to UWL. Yep, UWL for my undergrad in uh, sport management. Um, and then after that, went to uh, Viterbo, got my master's of business admin, and Coached some basketball at the Turbo too for a few years for Coach Wagner, so that was a really fun experience. You know, I I knew you then because working some of their games and attending their games. Uh, um, Wayne Wagner, a good friend, talked highly of you as an assistant. Your ability to recruit and game plan and practice, uh, developing uh, skills and drills in practice, and I I said to to Wayne back then that I think I thought you were destined to be a college basketball coach yeah um, I, I guess any, anything where I'm really just working with kids and having an impact um, that way I just don't I don't know if I could have handled the all the travel and, uh, that goes with being a college basketball I mean they're on the road quite a bit recruiting and and all that and I kind of want to get away from from a lot of the travel um, that comes with that. So, but um, I do miss coaching and coaching with Coach Wagner, and uh, he just uh, does such a good job with that program. He really runs a first class program. So, coaching is definitely something that I miss and I want to get back to when the time's right. What was your biggest takeaway from your experiences, both as a student and as a coach at Viterbo? Uh they definitely live the the servant leadership model that they preach there. You know, you can definitely tell in the employees that have been employed there for a while that um, that what they're that the the core values that they're trying to instill in their in their students and in their student athletes, um, the the employees that that are there and that have especially the ones that have been there for a long tenure, like Coach Wagner, um, they they live those values. What an interesting journey. When I say that, I mean this. You came, you started at a, a, a private grade school, um, Christian values, mm -hmm. Christian component. You go to Luther, very similar, Christ-orientated um, church, mm -hmm. school. You go to Viterbo, very similar, service, um, principles, values. Uh, and then you go to... Aquinas, and it's a Christ-centered education. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, something that's absolutely shaped me. I wouldn't want to, want to have done it any other way. You know, having Christ in my life is a, is a big part, the biggest part of my life, and um, being able to, you know, develop programs at, at Aquinas that incorporate that into our student-athletes' lives and and um, you know, being a part of uh, you know something bigger than just going to school and and uh, or getting a degree at a at a college, you know, but actually, um, you know, f 
further in yourself and your faith is is uh, really really cool. You're, but you you came from a family that models that, mm -hmm. so your roots are deep yeah. and strong mm -hmm. in values, and you've shared those in every stop, and now you're sharing them with uh, blue gold student athletes. Yeah. Yep. I know it's. Uh, like like you said, like every every stop that I've that I've had has prepared me um, for this. So, mm -hmm. and interesting again, our our guest today, Matt Sanders, activities director at Aquinas Schools. But something you didn't know that uh, I learned a couple months ago, and that is that Matt has is now wearing two hats. Yep. Yep. Um, just. Uh, you know, so, so I've been the athletic director at Aquinas. Um, this is my third year doing that. But then, uh, in October, this past October, um, I became the uh, human resources director at Aquinas as well. Mm -hmm. So, and so share the uh, job description. Um, it's uh, you know making sure that we our employees are getting paid the right amounts and getting paid on time, and making sure that the uh, um, you know the people that we're hiring are are good people and have have passed everything that they need to pass and um, uh, you know just um, problem solving is is a huge part of it you know especially with the uh, recent circumstances um, you know how are we going to you know get through this um, and you know we have these new regulations in um, you know that that come with uh, what's going on right now, so a big part, part of it's problem solving. We're gonna talk a little bit about that, explore the depth of uh, being an activities director and being uh, in a human service, uh, human resource director. But um, I read an interesting article yesterday and that talked about, um, just to build on what you said, talked about a couple of things regarding education. Uh, and in the second half of the show, stay tuned because we're gonna talk explore a lot about the coronavirus and what education will look like perhaps in the fall. But the article said that um, the, the virus uh, is going to affect uh, the teaching world, meaning this, that um, a, a lot of teachers that may be on the threshold of retiring are thinking eh, that maybe now is the time to retire. Uh, so uh, to, to avoid being exposed or being to a virus or uh, maybe even more important being in a situation that there's uncertainty in terms of education and, and classroom structure and so on. And then the uh, other part of the article was that uh, maybe officials that are older are, um, uh, or are thinking about retiring, this will propel them to retire uh, because they don't want to get in, continue to be involved in that. What's your thought on those two things? I think there's, you know, definitely some credence to both of those thoughts. Um, you know, I, I don't, I can't foresee, you know, any teachers or any officials making that decision right now. You know, being that it's summer break, but you know, the closer we get, if if things uh, get worse or things don't progress to where they they think they should, then then you know if if that's what what they think is the best decision for them and their health, then then uh, they should do that. Well, I think and and also the article went on to say that uh, being that the the classroom structure and the the structure of the day may change uh, um, dramatically, that more young people may be uh, homeschooled. Yeah, um, and you know everything's just so uncertain right now, and all we can really do at this point is just keep ourselves listening to you know the reports and and the guidelines from the government agencies and you know make contingency plans off of that and you know that's what we're doing at Aquinas right now is making uh, plans for let's say if this happens then then we'll do that if that happens we'll then we'll do this so um, just trying to plan ahead for um, you know something that um, you know, we don't really know what's going to happen. Exactly. Again, Matt Schneider, Aquinas Schools, as, uh, Athletic Activities Director, uh, Human Resources. Just uh, uh, continuing uh, to talk about your role with activities in athletics. Uh, interesting, I saw an article that was published like in the 1940s, and the author said that being an, an athletic director 
is the most complex and time-consuming job in the school system. Now that was back in the 30s and 40s, <laughs> yeah. this author wrote this article, and now here we are in 2020, and he was exactly right then in his observation, and more so today. It's the most time-consuming job in all of the school district with personnel. Would you agree with that? Well, I don't know. I mean, I look at, you know, what, what our, how much time our teachers put in, and they put in a lot of time, you know, especially behind the scenes, not just at school, you know, in their home, they're still doing work at home and and uh, and thinking, just even thinking about their kids, you know, that they're working with and and our, um, you know, principals, I mean, you know, at Aquinas, they, they just, they work a lot and Ted Knutes and at Aquinas, I mean, I mean we, oh, yeah. we, you know, I, I don't feel like I, like I, I feel like I, I work a lot, but but I also see that that a lot of other every, everybody in education is is working their tails off. So. Yeah, I'm I'm not minimizing what other people do in yeah. education, but I know activities directors uh, at all levels yeah. uh, throughout the, much of the country, and I know what their job responsibilities are, and the time they put in, and it's much more than anyone else. There's no question about it, yeah. and so. Well, we're going to just step aside for a minute when we come back more here as we interview Matt Schneider on Stephanie Rivers. We'll be right back. With our busy lives, it's a comfort to know that we can still remember loved ones in a traditional way with a monument. Lewiston Monuments in Lewiston, Minnesota has been helping families purchase a monument for over four generations. You'll find a large selection of beautiful granite, marble, and bronze monuments all at competitive prices. And they're a full-service company, so they also do straightening, cleaning, and repair of monuments. Stop in or call for a no-obligation consultation, or visit lewistonmonument.com for more information. You know, the thing I'm most proud of when I think about our company is the reputation that we've been able to build in this community. Our technicians have done a great job going out and performing magnificent jobs for the customer. And our customers have rewarded us with some really great reviews online. We have over 150 five-star reviews online right now. Our technicians do a great job out there and our reviews show it. We can say without hesitation, when you choose Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, you'll be glad you did. Welcome back to Seven Rivers Sports. Matt Schneider, Aquinas High School, our guest this week. Before we went, to, went on break, we talked a little bit about uh, your job as a um, activities director. And I sort of know some of it, but I want your thoughts on um, what I think are the main components of your job. One um, would be marketing your activities and, and Aquinas High School to the broad community because basically um, young people have a choice of going to public school, private school, and so on. So there, there is a level of awareness that is part of your job description. Yeah, and we really try to market our, our programs as much as we can. We, we think we have a lot of really, really solid programs um, with a lot to offer, um, you know, uh, young student athletes and, you know, just young people in our communities. Uh, so I think we do a good job at that, but there's always room for improvement. Mm -hmm. I noticed John Bias is a good friend of mine from uh, Luther, yeah. and they have really stepped up their marketing too. Yeah. Uh, to showcase what Luther is all about. And showcasing, well, you don't need to showcase what Aquinas is all about to me, because I have taught there and I know uh, many of the staff and I know uh, the special qualities uh, and the special parts of what Aquinas offers. There's no question about it. You also, to continue to what so consumes your day is um, you have to, you, you have to deal with some unpleasantries, too. You have to be aware of and, and deal with kids that maybe uh, have some academic deficiencies or that maybe make some bad decisions. Yeah, and that's the tough part of the job. Um, I guess one thing that I had to learn was that the right decision might not always be the popular decision. Um, so I've, you know, I'll, I'll, whenever I make any decision, I just try to think what what is the right decision, you know, um, regardless of if it's going to be the popular decision or not. So, how do you deal too with? Um, certainly, there's 
parental involvement and sometimes there's unpleasantries there mm -hmm. and sometimes they're justifiable sometimes they're not mm -hmm. and, and how do you deal with those issues you just try to be as transparent and honest as possible um, you know you can try to reference your school code of conduct but you know a lot of stuff that you deal with falls in the gray area so um, you know it's you, you just you just try to be as polite as understanding of the situation hear both sides of the situation from where they're coming from um, and at the end of the day just just make what you believe in your heart is the right decision prioritizing and preparing a budget mm -hmm. now the private schools may be more of a, a of a challenge than public but yet in the future uh, public education budgeting is going to be more difficult too mm -hmm. uh, yeah um, I mean it's it's still you know a uh, private school so we're you know we, we have to you know follow follow our budget um, you know, uh, I don't. I don't know. We we uh, just try to make our expenses, uh, you know, as low as we as low as we can. Uh, but but yet, uh, you know, make sure that we're still meeting the needs of of our families and, and being good stewards with our money. And you're doing a good job of that. Another uh, complex, perhaps, part of being an activities director is. Uh, recruiting and evaluating uh, your coaches and, and making sure that they're meeting the expectations that Aquinas has for their coaches. Mm -hmm. Is that a just difficult part? Um, with the coaching staff that I have right now, it's really not. You know, but but you do get some coaches, um, you know, that that come along that need some extra motivation and need some a reminder. Um, so I mean, yeah, there's going to be times where where there's difficulties and and um, you know, but but for the most part, you know, our staff at Aquinas is pretty stellar. Well, I think that's a good comment. I would absolutely agree with that. And so I think what our, our community would too. But you, you know, part of it is evaluating, being honest with your coaches, and you're not looking for reasons to to uh, criticize. But I mean, there there's an evaluation tool, a process, obviously, mm -hmm. at the end of each season. Um, Scheduling is a big part of it. I mean, scheduling um, scheduling conference games is done uh, for the most part, but you're involved in that. But scheduling non-conference opponents, finding uh, opponents that you you're, you feel that meet the needs of uh, what you are looking for in terms of enrollment and mm -hmm. competitive uh, mm -hmm. competitiveness and so on. Uh, one of the showcase things that Aquinas has done among you know many things in multiple sports but you're known for the midwest players classic and now yeah. the diocesan um, tournament which are mm -hmm. two highly uh, um, showcased events at aquinas mm -hmm. yeah uh two awesome events you know uh the diocesan classic is a, is a new one and that's uh cool to see the old rivalries you know from the old conference uh, uh coming back all to the lacrosse area um, you know that's that's a really cool new event um, that we're excited to, to host and be a part of, um, um, be a host site for, um, and uh, the Midwest Players Classic. You know, uh, just about everybody knows about that one, where we get you know some of the best talent in the Midwest to to come to the Lacrosse Center and put on a showcase there. I mean, every year except for last year, where there was a big snowstorm that pretty much canceled it. But every every year. Uh, you're bound to get some awesome games. Oh, absolutely. Let's spend the rest of this interview on uh, the coronavirus, COVID-19. And um, a lot of people, there's still speculation. Off Before we went on the air, we talked a little bit about that. But there's, just to sort of set the table for that, there there's still a great deal, a level of uncertainty as to what schools will look like. Will there be fall sports? Some articles you read, uh, they're 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 thinking and counting on and optimistic that fall sports will be intact. Others say, "Oh no, oh no." And the last thing I read was uh, they talked about phases uh, of, of bringing back fall sports. For example, 
uh, cross country and maybe tennis in the fall being you know less contact and more probable and then and then it, it went from there and the stage three the most difficult one to bring back would be football and then in the winter wrestling what are you hearing on fall sports well i'll preface this by saying that i haven't heard anything that anyone else has heard so i don't have any insider information um you know i i just hear what's been given to me by you know the wia and and uh, other um government agencies but i'm optimistic that that will have uh fall sports all our fall sports that will will start practices on time um you know however maybe there's going to be some um you know i could definitely see there being some sort of new um you know guidelines that we have to follow maybe it's fan attendance um you know i'm not exactly sure what it's going to look like but i do think we're going to have fall sports well the cdc government agencies local agencies are, they're going to they're, they're going because we're not in control of the virus the virus is in charge uh will determine a great deal it's not going to be individual schools conferences and so on it's going to be uh mandated by mm -hmm. um people that uh, are above uh, us but the la last thing i read about f with football and these again are it's just conjecture i realize that would be that Football may start later. It may not start training camp in early August. It may start later in August. And Aquinas begins their season at Prairie de Chien on August 21st mm -hmm. uh, in their in the Cooley Conference. He went from the Mississippi Valley to the Swall and now the Cooley. Mm -hmm. um, and then Luther and then uh, you start with Altoona, who's part of the Cooley. But one of the things I read is in all prop. The probable turn to according to this author was that um, practice would start maybe late in August and it, you, and it would be a reduced schedule. Has that been talked about? You know, not not like from uh, official WIA standpoint or anything like that. It's just you know ideas that are floated out there. Um, so you know if that's what um, they decide is best for the health of our student athletes and of our community, then then you know that's what we should do. High risk sports, wrestling, football, and so on. You know that it's to be determined. But I, I can see some modifications. The school day. A lot of there's a lot of conjecture on will there be a blended uh, um, school day or blended school year, mm -hmm. which means some uh, um, uh, homeschooling, um, uh, virtual uh, opportunities, and then um, a staggered. Um, they come in some days, some days stay at home. You staggered times when k kids come, uh, so they're not all uh, coming at the same time. They're not in the hallways at the same time. L the lunchroom situation may mm -hmm. go away. Students may eat in their classes. There may not be as much of an exchange uh, during the day. They may stay in a classroom. So all these are possibilities, and it, it's somewhat intriguing as to what the school will look like in the fall. Yeah, and all options are on the table. Um, and we're just planning ahead as best we can, uh, envisioning as many of those options as, as there possibly are and listening to, you know, what, uh, uh, what we're hearing from, from uh, the reports, so. You know, you, you, it's gonna be complex. I mean, all of this is still options on the table, but in all probability, Matt, the, things will not be the same. There's yeah. no question about it. Mm -hmm. So uh, you you have to be ready for you and administrative people, teachers, and so on. Coaches have to be ready for some likely changes. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I don't think there's any way that uh, that will be back to where we were in January. You know, th there's going to be uh, some. You, you'd have to think that there's going to be. You know some sort of restrictions on you know um, like you're saying people that are allowed in the cafeteria at one time or you know maybe we're gonna stagger um, you know uh, class times or something like something like that you know I hope that you know this all passes and we're back to where we were in January but um, all options are on the table and, and well I'll experts say that and I'm not one of them, but that uh, that the virus could very well come back. Yeah. And if we relax mm -hmm. ourselves as a society and in this community and start going 
are to restaurants and bars just doing all the same thing. Um, it's it, the future is not bright. Right. We, we have to take extra precautions. Right. Yeah. The schools the schools need to follow the CDC guidelines. So you know what the CDC guidelines are, and that's what the schools will follow. Yeah. Good. Well, various states I know are, are coming out with different. Uh, models and some of them are more relaxed but hopefully we uh we take the uh, the the road that we should take in terms of taking making sure our our kids and uh, our uh, adults are safe that's mm -hmm. the main thing so our guest uh this week matt schneider who we're always wanted to have him on the show but he's been too busy all the time but now during the summer months uh matt schneider aquinas high school our guest this week thanks for being on the show man. thanks for having me terry all right we'll be back with some closing thoughts right after this. you know the thing i'm most proud of when i think about our company is the reputation that we've been able to build in this community our technicians have done a great job going out and performing magnificent jobs for the customer. And our customers have rewarded us with some really great reviews online. We have over 150 five-star reviews online right now. Our technicians do a great job out there and our reviews show it. We can say without hesitation, when you choose Schneider Heating and Air Conditioning, you'll be glad you did. When you're faced with the decision of selecting a monument to honor someone dear to you, call Lewiston Monuments for a no-obligation consultation. Lewiston Monument is a full-service monument company, serving families in Iowa, Minnesota, and Wisconsin for over four generations. You'll find beautiful granite, marble, and bronze memorials, all at competitive prices. Their experts can help you design the perfect and unique memorial. Lewiston Monument. Call today or on the web at lewistonmonument.com. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. Next week, we get a chance to catch up with Alex Harris and Laura Kammer, former Logan High School student athletes, just completing their careers as athletes at St. Olaf College in Northfield, Minnesota. That's it this week here on Seven River Sports. I'm your host, Terry Erickson, hoping that you are staying safe and healthy and, like me, looking forward to getting your life back in the weeks and months ahead.